That groundhog told us that there's six more weeks of winter, but I'm looking forward to spring, which is why I've gathered up a bunch of my favorite spring and Easter projects. I put them all into one video so that I can share them with you. Hey everyone, thanks for coming to hang out with me today. My name's Jess. I'm really excited to share these projects with you. I hope you are too. Let's get started. On a recent trip to the Dollar Tree, I found these bamboo hoops at my store, which I'd seen other people haul, but this is the first that I saw them. And I had a really cool idea for a plant shelf. So I needed two packs of these bamboo rings, and I'm only gonna use the larger rings for this project, so I'll save the smaller rings for another time. And I also need a pack of these wall shelves that you can find at the Dollar Tree. There's actually two in a pack but I only need one for this project as well. I decided to leave both of my rings and my shelf just the natural wood color that they already were because I liked how they looked. For the rings, I took some thicker jute cord. I get this one from Walmart. It's a little thicker than the stuff that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And I just added a little hot glue to the outside of the ring and I started wrapping the jute cord until I had about an inch and a half wrapped. And then I double backed on itself because I wanted to make sure that there was a thicker amount of jute wrapped around this ring. So once I had about an inch and a half wrapped around, then I went back the other direction. And so it's basically a double layer of jute that I had wrapped just in one place. And I did that on both rings. Next, I used my ruler to find the center point of the two longer sides on the shelf, and I used a pencil to mark where the center was. I did my best to line the jute cord up with the center points on the shelf, and then I used a piece of painter's tape to uh, tape the two top pieces of the rings together, if that makes any sense, because I needed the right angle before I could glue the rings to the shelf. I added a little hot glue and I knew this would hold well because of the texture of the rope which is one of the reasons that I actually used the rope on there. It added a little element of decoration and it was also functional. So once I had them tacked in place with a small amount of hot glue then I turned the whole thing over and I added more hot glue on the bottom just to make sure that it was really secure. So the key with this is after you get that hot glue on the bottom you have to really let it set up before you can move on to the next step. I took the painter's tape off of the top of the rings and I'm using another piece of that thicker jute cord and I tied it around the two rings and then once I cut off a little of the excess on the shorter tail then I used the longer tail to wrap it around the top of the rings. Um, it's kind of hard to see at this angle but I did start off to one side so that once I started wrapping the jute down then the whole piece of jute would be centered on the top of the rings. I wanted to have the option of either setting this somewhere or hanging it somewhere. And since there were already holes drilled into this wall shelf, it made it really easy to be able to hang this if I wanted to. There is some white rope that comes with this wall shelf kit, but since I was using jute cord everywhere else, I decided to use the same jute that I was already using to hang this. So I strung the jute from the top down through the bottom, and then I added on a wood bead that's actually the same color as the wood in the ring and the shelf, so it all was nice and cohesive. And then I added a few knots to make sure that bead wasn't going to go anywhere. I measured out how long I think I needed the rope to be to hang it, and then I fished the other end down through on the other side. And I did the same thing. I added a bead and I tied a few knots just to make sure that everything would stay in place. And then of course I repeated that on the other side of the shelf as well. I gathered both sets of loops up towards the top of the rings and I made sure that there was a good amount of tension on the strings coming from the shelves. And you'll be able to see here in a minute that my loops actually weren't the same length and that's okay. I was able to make some adjustments later so that I could still hang it if I wanted to. I used another piece of jute just to help tie those two pieces together and I made sure that I tied it in a double knot to make it really secure. 
I took all four strands that were coming up from the shelf and I tied one big knot as far up as I could. Now because I had one loop that was slightly shorter than the other, I tied the knot up as high as I could where that shorter loop was and then once I had my knot in place, I just clipped off the shorter of the two loops and added just a tiny amount of hot glue to make sure that that rope wasn't going to go anywhere. And once the glue was all set and dried, you couldn't see that there was another piece of rope tucked down in there and then I just cut off the extra tails of that piece of jute that tied the two loops together I don't always do this but this jute cord that I was using seemed to be awfully fuzzy so I took a lighter and I just lightly went over each of the jute cords just to burn off some of those extra fuzzy pieces I had this really pretty blue jar on hand from the Dollar Tree last year, I believe. So I added that to the center of the shelf and then I just tucked in a few of my favorite pieces of greenery. the second DIY I'm going to use one of these glass candlesticks that you can find at the Dollar Tree and at Christmas time I had found these little um, I guess they're little Christmas containers but I really liked the lid on it because I liked the scalloped edge that it had so I'm going to create a little um, stand that I'm going to put a bird's nest on and I'm going to paint both of these pieces with the plaster color by Waverly and I did have to give both of these two coats and I wasn't too worried about painting the underside of that lid so much. I just needed the, the top side covered really well. So once those were both dry, I used the mineral color by Waverly. And I dabbed a little bit of the plaster color on my brush first before I dipped it in the mineral. And then I dabbed most of it off onto a paper towel. And I did just a little bit of dry brushing over both of the pieces. I didn't want a real aggressive looking distressing I guess you would say I just wanted a little bit of variation in the color so once both of those pieces had dried I'm just gonna use hot glue and I know you could use e6000 on here but I felt confident that I wasn't gonna be handling this too much that it would stay together just by using the hot glue and I always use the Gorilla Glue Sticks and they they seem to do a pretty good job so I just glued the lid onto the candlestick now, I've never made a bird's nest before, but I had this Spanish moss on hand that I got at the Dollar Tree, and since I already had the container that went with that lid, I figured that would be a good guide for me to use to figure out what size I needed for the bird's nest. So I just kind of pulled the Spanish moss apart and I stuck it inside the container, and then once I had the size that I liked, I ran a whole bunch of hot glue on the underside of it because I figured that would kind of help it keep its shape. And I had already painted a few eggs that I found at the Dollar Tree in different colors of chalk paint. So I pulled some of those out of my stash. And then just to add a little interest, I used a toothbrush dipped in the ink color by Waverly. And I just added a little bit of speckling on the three eggs that I had picked out. Now I was afraid that the bird's nest was going to start to lose its form so I cut up um, a skewer and I just tucked little pieces in the side walls of the nest just to help kind of hold its shape. Nice. Then I just tucked my little eggs into the nest and I added a few pieces of greenery and another little bow that I had made out of that same black and white gingham ribbon. I really love how this piece turned out and I was glad that the nest looked so realistic. I thought it was really cute. And since I didn't actually glue the nest onto that little stand that I made, I'll be able to use that um, pretty much year round. I could put a candle on it or some flowers or some other kind of piece of decoration. Project. I'm using two of these tinsel garland eggs that you can find at the Dollar Tree. 
Now, I always like these because I like the framework that the tinsel garland is on, and the garland isn't glued down or anything, so it's really easy to remove from the frames. So I just started out by removing all of the garland from both frames. And then I used my wire cutters to cut off the little nubby ends, and then the crossbars on those um, squares, I had to cut those out too because I didn't need those. And I wanted to get those out of the way because we're gonna be covering this up with some jute. So for the second egg, I counted up two sections from the bottom and I'm using my wire cutters again to cut the top section away from the bottom section. That's going to create kind of the, the basket effect that we're going for on these eggs. And the same thing, I cut the little nubbies off with my wire cutters as well. Once I had both eggs prepped, I bought this jute cord from Walmart. And you can see here, it's a good bit thicker than the kind that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And the reason I did that is because I knew I wanted to cover the entire egg with the jute. And I figured with a little bit of a thicker jute, it would go a little bit quicker. So I started out by just using a little bit of hot glue and since the roll of jute can't fit through the little squares on the egg, I had to cut uh, a long piece off and just start weaving it through the little squares. And I started out by covering the entire perimeter of the egg first and then I went back through and started working on the grid on the inside. And I can tell you that uh, for each length that you'll need for the inside grid, if you measure out about four lengths of jute, that's about how much it takes to cover the crossbars. And I'm showing you here how I connected the jute. Instead of gluing it onto the frame, I just added a little bit of hot glue kind of to the center of the jute and I squeezed the new piece onto it and rolled it in between my fingers after it had cooled a little bit. And it kind of made a seamless transition between the two pieces of jute. Here you can see how the whole egg looks covered in the jute. And this is the section that I was talking about, like the, the pieces that run from top to bottom and from side to side. If you measure out about four lengths, that's about how much you'll need to get those pieces covered. And I will tell you that to cover this entire egg, it probably took me about an hour, I would say. So it's kind of a long process, but it's definitely worth it in the end. And then don't forget, you have to cover the smaller piece that we cut too, because that's gonna go, we're gonna attach that to the other piece to make a basket. like to go back through and use a lighter just to help burn off the little frayed edges of the jute. So to attach the smaller piece to the larger piece, I am just adding a few dabs of hot glue kind of where the intersections of the grid are. Then after I get a couple dabs of hot glue in place, I'm going to go back through with some smaller jute and I'm just going to tie it on and it blends right into the other jute so you won't be able to see it but this way it just gives it a little bit of added security and I just made sure that when I tied it on the knot was on the back. So to decorate the inside of the basket I'm using two of these greenery bouquets from the Dollar Tree and I knew that I wanted to decorate this in a way that I could change it out if I wanted to so all I did was bend the bottom of the stem of the bouquet up and I kind of fished it through and hooked it onto one of the grids. Then I'm just going to tie it on and then that way if I ever decide to remove it, if I wanted to switch it out for some different flowers, nothing is glued down so it'll be, it'll be easy to switch out later on. And then after I had the second bouquet tied on, I just created a small bow out of this black and white ribbon and I tied that onto the front. love when I can create things that can be changed out for different times of year. 
So I was really happy with how this came out. And even though it's technically an egg shape, I think it's oval enough that you could definitely put decorations inside of it for the fall and winter and Christmas also. In addition to the 3D wire wreath form, you'll also need one of these eight inch wreath rings that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And these 3D forms have four rings on them. So that's why I decided to try to make three different wreaths out of them. And each ring is about the same size. And some of them have this post on them and some of them have a little tab on them, but they're pretty easy to remove with wire cutters. And these posts actually come off pretty easy just with a pair of pliers if you bend it back and forth a few times. So once I had the outer ring prepped, then on the smaller wreath, I only needed the inside ring. So I used my wire cutters again, and I kind of had to wiggle it around a little bit to kind of create a score line on the post that was connecting it. And then I was able to snap it off pretty easy. I think if I would have had a bigger pair of wire cutters, this would have come off a little bit easier, but I didn't have too hard of a time with it. After I had both rings ready to go, I took a pack of this jute cord from Walmart and they do sell jute at the Dollar Tree too, but I like this one from Walmart because it's just a little bit thicker. And when I'm covering pieces with jute, I like to use the thicker stuff because it goes just a little bit faster. So I started out by taking the jute and I'm just wrapping it around. I used a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place and I'm gonna cover both rings with this same thicker jute cord. And then after I get things wrapped with jute, I always like to take a lighter and just burn off the little fringy pieces that are left over, but you don't have to do that. That's just something that I prefer to do. Once I had both rings wrapped in the jute, I wanted to start weaving some more of the jute in between the two rings to kind of connect them. So I wanted the smaller ring to be pretty off center because I knew that there would it would be pretty hard to kind of get that ring centered in the middle. So if I pushed it over to one side and down a little bit, then it would be purposefully asymmetric, which makes it look a little bit better. Um, so I started out by using the jute and I hot glued it onto the outer ring and then I hot glued it onto the inner ring and then I tried to keep the tension while I started weaving the jute in between the two rings. And once I had a few wraps around both rings, I kind of reinforced it a little bit with a little bit more hot glue and then it was able to stay in place a little bit better. And I moved to the opposite side and I did a few wraps on that side as well, um, just to kind of hold the ring in place. And then I was able to just start weaving the jute in and out of the two rings until I had it covered as much as I liked. You can wrap it as many times as you want. Um, after I had a few rounds done, I kind of got the kind of got the feel of where I was going with this. So once you start wrapping, you'll kind of have an idea of where you want to stop with yours. Once I had the two rings wrapped how I like them, I decided to decorate the one side a little bit. So I took a few of the ferns from the Dollar Tree and I had to cut them down just a little bit because they were just a bit too long, I thought, for the size of this wreath. So I laid down a few of the ferns and then I created just a simple bow using some black and white striped ribbon that I already had on hand. And I added that to the center of the ferns and then I tucked in just a few little flowers just to finish off the wreath. I 
really love how this wreath turned out. I think it kind of crosses that line between boho and farmhouse, which is how I do a lot of my decorating. I, I, I like a lot of farmhouse, but I like to have a little bit of touches of other styles too. Project. I'm going to use one of these decorative jars found at the Dollar Tree. I really liked the shape of this jar and I really liked the ridges that it had on the outside. So again, I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue for that short-term, long-term hold. And all I'm doing is flipping the lid over and gluing it to the bottom of the jar. That way, it kind of mimics how the top of the jar is also. And then again, I'm gonna use my favorite color by Waverly, the color plaster, and I'm going to give this jar two coats of the chalk paint. Once both coats of the paint had dried, instead of distressing this with the chalk paint like I did in the first project, I decided to distress this with just a sanding sponge. So I went over all of the raised areas on the top and the bottom of the jar and also on those ridges too because I really like how the glass kind of peeks through. Then I took some of the thicker jute twine that you can find in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree and I just wrapped it around the top of the jar a few times and I held it in place with a little dot of hot glue. And then once I had wrapped it around the jar at the top, I then repeated that around the bottom where we had glued the lid on. I wanted to create a tassel for on this jar. So I took a small notepad, I think it's about three inches wide, and I just wrapped jute around it until I felt like it was thick enough to be good for a tassel. Then I slipped the loops of jute off of the notepad, and I took another length of jute and I tied it about an inch from one end of the loops. And once I had that knotted in place, I just took the small end of the jute and the excess length and I wrapped it around several times just to give it a nice banded look. And I held that in place with a little dab of hot glue. And I wrapped it around a few more times just to make sure that that jute was really settled into the hot glue. So once I had that band in place, I took the longer end of the loops and I just cut those and then I kind of squeezed them up through my fingers to give them a little bit of a trim just to make sure that they were even. Then I took another length of jute and I kind of fed it through the smaller loops that were on the end of the tassel. And then I just double knotted it at the top. That way it kind of cinched the loops together. And then I also had extra length from the jute to work with so that I could tie it around the top of the jar. I love how this jar turned out. I just put a single flower inside of mine, but I think it's pretty enough that it could stand alone as its own piece. I love and these new wood grained bunnies and eggs and chicks that they have at the Dollar Tree this year. So I knew I wanted to create a wall hanging out of the bunny one. I had this old sign from the summer last year, but you could use any kind of sign that has an arrow shape to it. And I'm gonna use some of my favorite florals. The first thing I needed to do was separate the sign. I only needed one section for this. So whenever I find something like this at the Dollar Tree, it's always a great deal because usually that means I can get three DIYs out of one thing. Before I started painting the arrow part of the sign, I covered the design up with a piece of crap paper using a glue stick. And then I just took my sanding block and went downward over the edges to get rid of the excess craft paper. Next, I'm using the truffle color by Waverly and I gave the arrow one pretty thick coat of paint. I didn't feel the need to do two, especially because I knew I would distress the edges later on. The great thing about the bunny that I'm using is because the wood grain pattern on it is so pretty, I didn't have to paint that at all. I decided just to leave it alone. But if you wanted more of a distressed look on the bunny, you could go to town using some dry brushing on that too and I think it would bring out the wood grain. 
Next, I took that sanding block again and I ran it over the edges just slightly. I didn't want too much of that particle board showing through, but I do like a little distressing and I think the sanding block does a great job. I also created a decal using my Cricut that said carrot patch with an arrow pointing in the right direction and I stuck that to my sign. Now if you don't have a Cricut, of course you could use letter stickers or if you're really great at hand lettering, you could do that too. I just don't really like my handwriting so I always rely on my Cricut for these projects. To attach the sign to the bottom of my bunny, I'm just using some hot glue and I did decide to hang my sign on my bunny crooked because I just think it looks really cute that way. It kind of gives the bunny a little more character. I'm sure you're like me and you have a lot of floral stems that look like this where you used all of the flowers on a project but you have the stems and leaves left over. And this is a great way to use these up. So I clipped off one of the stems and I pulled off two leaves from another one of the stems and I attached it to the other end. I did add a dab of hot glue on each end just to make sure that those leaves wouldn't pop off and I gave the stem a slight bend so that it would fit the natural curve of the bunny. And then I just topped it off with a few more pieces of greenery and a bow that I had created out of this shimmery pink ribbon. This is a great way to personalize things. If you're not so much into the farmhouse, you could definitely make it more simple and use something that's a little more modern or a little more boho, but you guys know me, I love my farmhouse, so I always try to stick with that theme when I do my projects. But because, like I said earlier, the wood grain on this bunny is just so pretty, it made this project come together so quickly because I really didn't have to do much. Otherwise, um, I just had to add a little paint to that sign and glue everything together. So I love projects like this. Give me a big thumbs up if you have one of those flowerless bunches of stems in your craft stash. I saw these galvanized Easter buckets at the Dollar Tree and I knew as soon as I saw them that I wanted to use them as my base for an egg topiary. So I grabbed this little bucket that has this cute little bunny gnome on it and I have this Easter decoration and I can't remember if I got it this year at the Dollar Tree or last year but they always have similar things. And I'm also going to use a few dowel rods. If you have one long dowel rod, use that, but I only had two short ones, so I knew I was gonna have to attach them together. I started by taking the eggs off of the ribbon hanger that they came on, and normally I'm not a huge fan of glitter, but I decided for Easter, with all the fun colors, the glitter looked really nice. So I decided to keep the work simple and just use the designs that already came on the eggs. If you have one long dowel rod, you could just cut it to the size you need for your egg topiary, but because I only had two short ones, I decided to add some hot glue to one end and then to make sure that it was really secure, I just wrapped where the seam is of the two dowel rods with some scotch tape. I flipped my eggs over and laid them out kind of staggered, a little bit of a zigzag pattern, and then I just used some hot glue to attach all of the eggs together. I needed an even surface on the back of the eggs to be able to attach my dowel rod, so I'm using some craft sticks and I just stacked two of them up for the eggs that are on the bottom, and then that way that kind of bridged the gap between the eggs that were on the top and the eggs on the bottom and it gave me a nice flat surface to attach my dowel rod. Now I could just hot glue my dowel rod right along the back side of the eggs and the craft sticks and then just to make it look a little neater I took a piece of burlap ribbon and I hot glued that on top of the dowel rod that way it kind of covered up those craft sticks and it also gave it more of a finished look and the ribbon actually acted as extra security to make sure that everything stayed together. Before I start decorating my eggs, I wanted to make sure that my dowel rod was the right length, so I laid my bucket down and I used a pencil to mark where I need to cut it. You can do this with a saw, but I have these miter shears that work really well for cutting through dowel rods. And I always have those linked in the description box below. Now for the fun part, time to decorate the eggs. I started with a pink gingham ribbon that I tied into a bow and I added that to the top. 
And then, I don't know about you, but I have this bag of scrap pieces of floral and greenery that I keep on hand for smaller projects like this. So I dug through my bag of greenery and I picked out a few pieces and a few little flowers that I had left over from other things. And I just kind of started going to town. There's no rhyme or reason, just glue things on till you think it looks good, or you could keep it plain also and make this a really quick craft. But I decided to add a few little leaves and flowers, and then I ended, I ended up adding another bow on another one of the eggs. And I did keep my dowel rod natural looking. I didn't paint it or anything because I wasn't going to show too much of it. But if that's something that bothers you, you could always paint it or stain it to whatever color you like. Another way you could change this to fit your style is you could always flip these eggs over and paint on the back side of them your favorite colors or put your favorite designs on or you could even add some letters to spell out the word home or something like that, something related to Easter. There's a lot of different ways that you can customize this but I decided to keep everything pretty simple because I wanted this to be a pretty quick craft. To finish off my topiary, I put some floral foam in the bucket and then I covered the top with floral moss. Now, I did this kind of backwards just because of the way my camera angle is. You couldn't really see the whole topiary from this overhead shot. So what I would recommend is if you're going to do this at home, add some hot glue to the bottom of your dowel and stick it in the floral foam first and then add the floral moss around it. It'll make it a lot easier. I was out of town a few weeks ago so of course I had to check out the local Dollar Tree and to my surprise this Dollar Tree actually had a Dollar Tree Plus section which my store does not and I found some really cool things including this really cute wooden tray for three dollars. I wanted to give my tray a really rustic look so I started with my favorite color of chalk paint which is the plaster color by Waverly and I started painting it around all of the surfaces. I wouldn't say that I did a dry brush but I definitely didn't do a full coverage coat either and for the center of the tray I was going to cover that up but I did drop some of the paint into the center also just to make sure that it had a little bit of paint on it too in case any of those edges would get exposed. Exposed. Then for the center of my tray, I took some of these giant craft sticks that I get at Walmart and I had measured the inside of my tray and mine measured about eight and an eighth of an inch wide. So I cut nine of these giant craft sticks down to about eight and an eighth of an inch and I always use my paper trimmer for this because I feel like it's the easiest way to get the most even cuts, especially whenever you need all of your sticks to be the same length. After all my sticks were cut, I went in with another color of the Waverly chalk paint, this time in mineral, and I gave each of the sticks one solid coat of that color. Once all of my paint had dried on the tray and the sticks, then I decided to dry brush all of the pieces in the opposite color. So I went in on the tray and I used the mineral color this time on the tray and I dry brushed around all the edges and the corners. And then for the craft sticks, I went in with the plaster color and I dry brushed over those to make the sticks and the tray both look very cohesive. Now, if you're not into the farmhouse style, you could definitely still do this look, but you would probably just want to either keep the natural wood or use a stain or just use solid paint colors and not do the dry brushing. I knew I needed there to be a slight gap in between each of the sticks. So to get it as even as possible, I always like to start on the outsides and work my way in. So I glued the two outside sticks down first and then I went from the outsides towards the middle. And as I got closer to the middle, I could start adjusting the little gaps that I needed to leave in between the sticks so that it didn't look like there was a big gap on one side or the other. It just kind of gradually made its way into the center. I forgot to hit record, but I did wrap each of the handles of this tray with some jute cord. And then because my jute cord was a little on the fuzzy side, I decided to take a lighter and burn off all the little fuzzy pieces that were left behind. 
As a final embellishment for my tray, I decided to cut a decal out on my Cricut that says, here comes the sun, and I just applied it to one side of the tray. Now, if you really wanna keep this out all year long, you might wanna skip this part because this kind of implies that it's only a spring and summer craft, but I think I'll probably keep it out all year long anyway. The Dollar Tree always brings out really cute wooden cutouts for every holiday and every season and these are some of the easiest things to transform to fit your home. I started by taking one of these wooden bunnies that they had out this year and this little wooden home sign. I'm not sure if they have them out right now but I know I've seen them in the past and they kind of pop up here and there. The first thing I did was fill in the little hole at the top of the ear on the bunny with some Dollar Tree spackle just to help ca camouflage it once I started painting. I decided to use the back side of this wooden bunny sign. I liked how the front had the ear cutouts and the little tail, but I wanted to keep this more simple just as a bunny silhouette. So I took a pair of pliers and I just kind of pried off that excess bunny tail that was peeking around to the back side and then I trimmed off the little wood shards with my scissors. Next, I decided to mix a little bit of the antique wax and a tiny drop of the ink colored chalk paint by Waverly to create a darker toned stain and I applied this on the home sign. The ink is pretty saturated as far as paint goes and I always regret when I don't put gloves on for this. But once I had painted a small section of the home sign, then I just used a baby wipe to take off the excess paint. Now, a lot of times I like to apply stains and paint with a baby wipe, but because this had little cutouts in between the letters, I wanted to make sure that those were all covered well. So that's why I decided to paint it on with a paintbrush first and then take off the excess with the baby wipe. You could paint the bunny whatever color you wanted, but I wanted something a little more neutral, so I decided to give my bunny one pretty thick coat of the plaster color by Waverly, just because I feel like a lot of the Easter decorations that I already have up in my home have a lot of color to them, so I wanted to balance it out with a more neutral piece. I wanted my bunny to have a bow tie made of greenery and flowers and I'm so glad that the Dollar Tree has these really pretty greenery stems out this year. I got some of these last year and I was really excited when I saw them again this year. I took a couple and I cut them down to size how I liked it, how it would fit well on the bunny's neck. And then once I had the right size, I used a little dab of hot glue to glue the two stems together. And then just to reinforce everything, I tied it in the center with some jute twine. Then I continued stacking the greenery and some of the little flowers on top of each other until I liked how it looked. Once my greenery bow tie was finished, then I just used some hot glue to hot glue it to around the bunny's neck. To complete this little bunny, I just added some hot glue to its feet and attached the home sign right to the bottom. The great thing about this home sign is because it already has a wooden base, it'll help my bunny stand up on its own. If you like this video so far make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and come follow me on Instagram at glue la la. Another thing at the Dollar Tree this year that makes for some really easy home decor are the little carrots. They have twine wrapped ones and they have these super cute bottle brush carrots this year too. I knew I wanted to make a wreath using those bottle brush carrots, so I grabbed one of these wicker wreath forms. These are from the Dollar Tree. They come up from time to time. I think I got this one last year, but they'll probably have more out this year for spring and summer. And I grabbed a couple bunches of flowers from the Dollar Tree. Now, when I do flower arranging, <laughs> 
I take the lazy way out or the efficient way out, however you want to say it. And I usually keep the bunches all together. And the great thing about these wicker wreath forms is because of the gaps between the wicker, you can just slide the stems of the flowers right in between the little pieces and they hold pretty steady. But what I like to do is add a little jute twine or um, some floral wire, wire or even a pipe cleaner or a zip tie, anything just to make it a little more sturdy. And I started with these yellow flowers and I tucked them in and then I tucked a couple pieces of the white flowers on top of it just to break up that yellow color a little. And like I said, I tied everything on with jute twine. I didn't want to use any hot glue because I love being able to reuse the wreath forms and the flowers after each season. I created a simple burlap bow to go on my wreath and you can see I decided to put everything to one side on my wreath but you can make this how you like it. You could put everything at the top or everything at the bottom or you could go the whole way around with it. So I tied my bow on to the one side and I started messing with the tails even though <laughs> Fluffing bows is like a never ending task, right? <laughs> like you fluff it once, you mess with it, you mess with the tails, you do some more rearranging. But anyway, so I then took my cute little bottle brush carrots and they do have a jute twine hanger on them, but the jute wasn't long enough for me to be able to tie it around the wreath. So I cut off the jute twine and then I hot glued another piece of jute twine on the back of it that was long enough that I could tie it around the wreath. And you can see here, I'm messing around with two of the carrots, but in the end, I actually decided to tie on three carrots to my wreath. I saw these square shaped mini bowls at the Dollar Tree and when I saw them I knew right away that I wanted to turn these into succulent planters or bud vases and there's six in a pack so I think that's a pretty good deal. So along with those dishes, I'm also gonna use some of the Tumbling Tower blocks and some of these giant craft sticks from Walmart. If you don't have those things, you could buy two of these pallets at the Dollar Tree and you could save yourself a lot of steps, but I only had one, so I had to create my own. I started with seven of the Tumbling Tower blocks. Actually, I used 14. I'm gonna glue seven together in a row and I'm gonna do two rows of that. So for this project, I decided to try some wood glue. A lot of times I just use the Gorilla Glue hot, you know, the hot glue sticks, but um, there is going to be a little weight to this project. So I thought the wood glue would give me a better long-term hold. And you can see here, I'm just using my square to help line everything up. And like I said, I glued seven in a row and I made two rows of seven. While the wood glue was setting up on my tumbling tower blocks, I got to work on cutting down my craft sticks. So I took nine of the craft sticks and I used my paper trimmer, which is my favorite way to trim down craft sticks, and I cut these all down to five inches in length. And at this point, the wood glue was still not set up, so I got to work on decorating these little mini square dishes. I had this burlap trim on hand from the Dollar Tree. I think I got it last year, but I believe I've seen it there recently. And I wanted the, the cup to be mostly clear. I really wanted to be able to see through it, but I didn't like that little lip on the bottom. So that's why I decided to take this trim and just run a piece around the bottom of three of the cups. And after my wood glue had dried, then it was time to start assembling this little mini pallet ladder type of thing. So I used my square ruler again and I put both sets of my tumbling tower blocks on the square just to keep them even and I pre-laid out the craft sticks just to get a good idea of the spacing that I would need in between each craft stick. And anytime that I do something like this where I have to space things out, I always glue the bottom one first and then I go back through and I glue the top one down. That way it kind of stabilizes the piece and then I can go back and forth. So now I'll go back to the bottom one and glue the next one to the bottom and then I'll go back up and glue the next one to the top and I just keep going back and forth like that until I get to the middle and then that way it helps me judge when I need to add a little more space in between one of the sticks or when I need to make it a little smaller. 
After everything was set up, then I went in with some paint and I decided to give this a pretty heavy dry brushing. I wouldn't say I gave it a full coat. Um, I wanted some of that wood grain to show through and of course I'm using the plaster color by Waverly because you all know that's my favorite color. But this is definitely something you could customize to fit your style if you wanted to paint it a nice big bold color or you could even stain it and really show off the wood grain of the craft sticks. I wanted to add the rope hanger before I finished this project and there was a nice little space on the back side where a rope would tuck in nicely. This rope I actually got from Amazon. It's not the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, but you could definitely use that too. I just like this one because it's a little thinner than the nautical rope. And you can see it just tucked up against those tumbling tower blocks and then I added a bunch of glue on top just to make sure it was secure. Now I was ready to start adding in the cups. So I laid them out first just to get an idea of how I wanted them spaced out. And I also put them on an angle just to make it more interesting. And I'm using this fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, which is very similar to the E6000 glue. And I added a little dab on the back and I knew I would be able, you could see it through the cup, but that was okay because I was gonna be filling the cups up anyway and I knew I would be able to cover up the little blob that you would see. But because these are plastic, I figured the Fix All Adhesive would adhere a little better to the plastic than just using hot glue. I decided to keep the decorating simple for mine, so I added some river rock to each cup and then I added one clip of a sprig of flowers to each cup also. But another idea I had was if you are a beach goer, you could collect sand from your favorite beaches and fill the cups with sand from the beaches and add some seashells for a nautical look. When I saw these little square boxes at the Dollar Tree, I knew right away that I wanted to create a mini hanging planter with them. So again, I'll be using the tumbling tower blocks and one of these eight by 10 canvases from the Dollar Tree. I started by using my little mini screwdriver to pull out the staples on the backside of the canvas. Sometimes when I'm removing canvas, if I don't mind if the staples are on the back, then I'll just cut the canvas away and leave the staples. But for this project, I did didn't want the staples to show on the back so I just eliminated a step and I pulled the staples out right away and then I was able to remove the canvas. It's always a gamble when you pull the canvas off a frame like this because you never know what that wood's going to look like underneath. This one looked pretty good. It just had some really rough edges so I just took a piece of sandpaper and made sure that it was all nice and smoothed out before I moved on to painting. Guess what friends, I'm not going to paint this with the plaster color. That's right, I'm going to use this agave color by Waverly which is one of my favorite colors for spring. I love the teal in this color. So I gave the frame one really good coat of the agave and I also gave four of the tumbling tower blocks a coat of that paint as well. Now because I wasn't sure if the back side of this frame would actually show or not where I displayed it, after the top and the sides had dried with the paint I flipped it over and I did give the back side of the frame a coat of paint as well. All right, so I did sneak in a little bit of the plaster color. I decided just to give it a good dry brushing over the box, but this is another time when you could customize this. You could also go for more of a monochromatic look and paint it the same color as the frame, or you could stain it to show off that wood grain. I wanted my pieces to have a distressed look and there's different ways that you could do this. You could dry brush another color on top of this, but because this frame and the tumbling tower blocks are made of wood, I decided just to use some sandpaper and sand over the corners of everything to show off that wood underneath. The tumbling tower blocks are going to be the base to help stand up the frame. So I glued two of them together and then the other two together as well. And these are going to act as feet for on the bottom of the frame. So once they were hot glued together, I got my ruler out and I spaced them out so that I would have a better idea of where they needed to be for the frame. And then all I had to do was add a little hot glue to the bottom of the frame and stand it up on top of the blocks. Since the basket already had holes on each side, I took a piece of jute and folded it in half and I pushed the folded end through the hole from the inside to the outside. And then I was able to pull the tails of the jute through the loop 
to connect the jute to the sides of the crate and I needed two tails coming out from each side so that I could connect it to the frame a little easier. I laid the basket inside of the frame where I wanted it to hang down and I had one tail uh, underneath the frame and one tail on top of the frame. So I glued the two tails that were on top of the frame down first just to hold everything in place and then I hot glued the tails to the back side and then the excess from the tails I just wrapped around the corners of the frame to give it a decorative touch. After I had wrapped the rope around both corners of the frame, I debated whether I should add bows or not or flowers, but in the end I decided to keep it pretty simple and minimal and I just left the rope on there, but you could definitely decorate it up however you'd like. To decorate the inside of my hanging basket, I decided to take two small pieces of scrap burlap and I laid it over the opening of the crate before I put the floral foam in because the slats on the crate are a little wide. I was afraid you would really see that floral foam through there. And then I just trimmed off some of the excess burlap and then I used some of my favorite flowers from the Dollar Tree and I poked it down inside of the floral foam. Thanks for coming to hang out in the craft room with me today. I left some videos on the screen that I think you might like. Have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.